Welcome to Part 1 of Evaluation Basics for Non-Evaluators, a video primer for individuals seeking grants from the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program. This video was created by Evaluate at the Evaluation Center at Western Michigan University for MentorConnect. Evaluate is the Evaluation Resource Center for the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education, or ATE, program. MentorConnect provides mentoring and technical support to help community colleges prepare competitive ATE grant proposals for the improvement of technician education. I'm Lori Wingate, and I'm Director of Evaluate. Before we get started, I should point out that although Evaluate is funded by NSF to provide guidance on evaluation matters, we do not speak for NSF. NSF's ATE program is focused on improving technician education, mainly through two-year colleges. The program funds centers, targeted research, ed conferences and workshops, and several different types of projects. Be sure to read the ATE program solicitations for details about these program tracks and their requirements. MentorConnect's main focus is getting institutions who have not been funded by ATE into the program. So the examples I'll share in this video are about that type of project. That is, projects that are funded for up to $300,000 for three years that take place at colleges that are new to the program. But a lot of what I'll cover in this video will apply to evaluation in all kinds of contexts. To start off, I'd like to introduce Jen Generickson. She is going to help us work through the basics of evaluation so you can finish this video series ready to build evaluation into your ATE proposals. Jen has a great idea for an ATE project. The technical programs at her college are struggling with retention, especially among first generation and historically underrepresented students. So she and her team have developed a plan for a project to address this problem. One component is to implement intrusive advising across the college's technical programs and train advisors on how to use this approach to make sure no students fall through the cracks of academia. The college is seeing a lot of dropouts among first-generation students, so they will use grant funds to develop resource materials and strategies to support these students and help them succeed regardless of the types of barriers they face in completing their education. Finally, they're also going to create a new tech prep course, which will help students in technical programs develop in the areas of critical thinking, teamwork, and resilience. They expect these activities to lead to increases in the number of students completing technical degrees and transferring to four-year STEM programs. Jen and her team feel like they have a pretty good plan that meets a real need at their college. She's reading over the ATE program solicitation before she starts writing her proposal. And she comes to this section on evaluation, which states that all projects carry out evaluative activities. She's never had an NSF grant, and she's not entirely sure what they mean by evaluative activities. In fact, she has a lot of questions, like, what do they mean by evaluation? This project doesn't have a big budget. How much is it going to cost? Why do we have to do it? Who does the evaluation? Where does it go in the grant proposal? And what will happen? How does the evaluation affect my project? Let's start with the most fundamental question of what is evaluation. If we look up the word in the dictionary, we'll find a definition like this one. But that doesn't tell a whole lot about what NSF, or any other funder for that matter, means by program evaluation. You probably know the old story about a group of people around an elephant who can't see the whole elephant. They can only feel different parts of it. Each one is pretty certain they know what it is based on what part of it they are experiencing. Program evaluation is a lot like that. Sometimes when people hear about program evaluation for the first time, they think it's the same as course evaluations, or surveys, or it's like auditing. While each of these may be a part of or related to an evaluation process, none of them really give you the overall picture of what program evaluation really is. Boiled down, evaluation involves four main steps. The first involves asking important questions about a project's processes, outcomes, or other dimensions. This is about making sure the evaluation focuses on the things that really matter. The next step is gathering evidence that will help answer those questions. Then we have to make sense of those data, so we interpret the results and answer the evaluation questions. And then the last step is to use the information for accountability, improvement, and planning. But it's not really a final step, because the evaluation should also inform decisions about the next project. 
let's take a little closer look at what might be included in each of these steps. Those important questions might be about whether goals were achieved, but they can also focus on the program's implementation, measuring outcomes like changes in the target population, or even look at sustainability of the project. One of the people in the cartoon equated evaluation with research, and yes, evidence for evaluation is often gathered using research methods like focus groups, interviews, surveys, observations, and experimental designs. In the ATE program, evaluations often utilize a college's institutional data, may use results from course evaluations, and sometimes includes feedback from panels of experts or advisors. When it comes to interpreting or making meaning of the data that are collected, evaluations almost always look for project strengths and opportunities for improvement. And any time an evaluation looks at outcomes, we should be determining the magnitude of the outcomes and their practical significance for the people involved. Evaluation results can be used to make improvements to a project as it's being implemented and to plan new projects. You'll need to include your evaluation results in reports to funders. Evaluation results will help you seek new funding because they serve as evidence of your capabilities. Lessons learned from evaluation can also contribute to a discipline's larger knowledge base about the effectiveness of different types of interventions. That's still pretty general, so let's go back to Jen's project. To begin planning her project, she'll need to map out how the activities she and her team are planning are going to bring about the changes she wants to see for students at her college. A good way to do this is to develop a logic model. The ATE program doesn't require logic models, but people find them useful for thinking through about what a project is going to do and also for communicating that plan to others. Since this video isn't really about building logic models, I'm going to go ahead and create Jen's logic model for her. And as I'm doing that, I'd like you to start thinking about what questions you think the evaluation should address. In the first column for activities, we'll put in those activities that we know are part of the project that Jen is planning. Then we'll put in the outcomes that the project is supposed to achieve, which are to increase the number of graduates who either transfer to STEM programs at four-year college or enter the technical workforce. Now we need to connect the activities to those desired outcomes. It's expected that the activities will lead to more students passing technical courses and staying enrolled at the college. If those short-term outcomes are achieved, the college will see more students persisting in their technical programs and graduating with marketable technical credentials, which they can use to either transfer to four-year STEM programs or enter the workforce. Now that you can see this project mapped out, you may want to pause this video and think for a moment about what questions you think that the project evaluation should address. To make sure the project is on track to make a difference for students, the first question should focus on the project's design and implementation. We could ask, to what extent are the tech prep course, first generation, student resources, and intrusive advising meeting the needs of students? Then we could move on to the first level of outcomes. It would be important to determine the extent to which the project is impacting student success in the technical courses. That's question two. And their ability to navigate college and stay enrolled, which is question three. Next, we could look at how the project is impacting student persistence in technical programs, question four, and program completion rates, question five. Given the short duration of this project, just three years, it would be premature to consider the long-term outcomes. So if we went with this set of evaluation questions, we'd have five overarching questions addressing both project implementation and outcomes, we would aim for using a mix of quantitative and qualitative data from multiple sources to address all the questions, but we're not going to get into the details of data collection in this video. If you are interested in learning more about logic models, we have a couple of resources in our handout that supports this video that you may want to check out. The first is a logic model template, and the second is a recorded webinar that demonstrates how to develop a logic model and use it in a grant proposal. To learn more about the qualities of good evaluation questions, see the Evaluation Questions Checklist for Program Evaluation. Links for all the resource materials mentioned in this video series are listed in this handout. Next, we'll discuss how much does evaluation cost.